being so useful to uncover those differences. Two prominent theories that uh, myself and my colleagues were interested in were the general slowdown, which essentially, essentially says all the adults are just lower in everything they do, and the age related decrease in the efficiency of inhibition or inhibitory processes. This is a, an approach championed by a Hasher and Zacks and it was again subject uh, to, to quite a lot of research here in the previous. So what we did is we employed, we used this redundant target task to both young and old adults with and without destructors. Now destructors is a very important term here, so maybe you can uh, translate destructors, Gangaho. Gangaho? Gangaho. Gangaho. All right. Destructors. Yes. <laughs> and the design will allow us to test those two important things. If you think about this, though, think about the real world, about old people walking in a very crowded street. One possibility is that they are just generally slow, but the other possibility is that there's too many lights and sounds that come into the cognitive system, making it very hard for them to process information. I had this from age five. That's, that's, I, I cannot inhibit noises, and so I sit with my earplugs. When we took the train, checked up, he saw me sitting with the earplugs. Anyways, what we are going to do is this, or what we have done is this. We have two tasks. This is one task, this is another task. In both tasks, we have the double target condition versus single target. So we can measure capacity by comparing this one to this one. But we can also measure capacity on a different task in which we measure two targets versus one target, except that this time there is also a distract. Something that you don't need. It's not the target. And this task allows us to compute one kind of capacity, another kind of capacity, compare them across young and older adults. And again, the task is very, very similar. If you detect a bright X in the next slide, but you press yes, if not, then you press no. Except that in this example, the X is accompanied by the O. It doesn't matter. You have an X, you have to say yes. But you can see that the presence of this destructor, the fact that you have this in the same display may potentially make it harder for people to process the target, especially so if they are old, as the theory postulates. So we had two groups of participants. We had older and younger. The youngest were 22 years old on average, if I remember correctly. The older was 71 years old on average. But we measured their uh, visual acuity very carefully to make sure that processing is all about the brain and not because they forgot their glasses at home. So that's very important. We had two tasks. Without distractors and with distractors. And these are the response that we get in terms of mean response times. If you will notice, the effects themselves are relatively small. 
So I will tell you in just a moment what each number says, but those are the mean response times in milliseconds, and these are the effects in milliseconds, and you can see that they are quite small. See, it's 20 and 26, so these are very small effects, but they are extremely consistent. Because we have many, many trials, and because we train the participants, they have their own practice in them, they do the task with very little variability. So even a few milliseconds actually a rather substantial effect in statistics. All right, let me walk you through this. So two tasks. This is the destructor absent. So you either see an x, one x, or none, versus the destructor task, in which you could see two targets, a target and a destructor, or two destructors. These are the mean response times for the conditions, for the young and for the old. <coughs> And again for the young and for the old. And this is the redundant target effect, which essentially tells us what is the difference between two and one. So you can see that the young uh, adults without destructors were six milliseconds faster here than they were. And also that they were six milliseconds faster here than they were. So for the young, uh, sorry, and then for the, the senior adults, without destructors, you get six weeks. Sorry about the confusion. So no destructors, the same difference for the young and for the old. Although, before I move on, notice that on average, the adults are slower than the young. So the youngs are about 390 to 400 milliseconds here the senior are 450. So a 15 millisecond difference. This is exactly what you have on your poster, right? So very consistent value. So if we only look at these data, the destructor absence, we see that for the young and for the old people, moving from one to two targets or the other way around does exactly the same thing. So in terms of capacity, the difference between two and one, and I will show how we calculate it, so they seem to be doing about the same. But what if we look at the destructor task? In the destructor task, the younger adults have a difference of 30 milliseconds here. And the older adults have a difference of 26 milliseconds. So in other words, when there are destructors in the display, such as the old, the younger adults suffer. 30 is greater than 6. So it does impair the performance. But importantly, the effect is twice as large for the senior. It seems then that in terms of basic capacity, they are quite close to one another. In terms of the ability to ignore the irrelevant information, the signals have a, a, an effect that is about twice as large. So we calculated the capacity coefficient and also a measure that is called CZ, which is based on the work of Joseph Hupt and Jim Townsend. And this allows us to uh, convert the capacity coefficient to a single value that can be then subjected to a statistical comparison. Now, I think you've seen those viola plots before. They give you the posterior distributions. Did you, Dan, you use them, right? Uh, yeah, I should. Yeah, OK. So just to give you a, a, a single point of focal interest and know what you can focus about, the differences that you can focus on would be these two arrows. This arrow in red here gives you the difference score for the capacity of the young with and with sorry with and without destructors. So this is essentially marking how much do young adults lose 
by ending these structures. And this line here tells us how much oil adults lose by having these structures. And you can see that the older loss is greater than the young loss. And that is already a measure that is based on the actual capacity. This is not just mean response time. This is a model-based comparison. If I were to go now to the theories, I would say that by the looks of it, the older adults seems to suffer more from the presence of destructors than the young adults, supporting an inhibition view of probability. And those measures now are really giving us the NBA rates. This is another sophisticated way to look at the differences in capacity in young and old adults with and without destructors, this time looking into the parameters of the model. So remember this statement? We use the LBA model as a sophisticated measurement tool because we can overcome or control for biases and other undesired parameters. And the kind of effect that I would like to draw your attention to is marked with red again. This is the uh, rate of processing for the young adults when they only have single target. So the single target with and without destructor, for the young adults you can see that the rate of processing with and without destructor did not change much. They were not uh, affected or very little affected by the addition of destructor. Whereas for the older adults, the rate of processing suffered quite a substantial deficit. So the destructor present uh, processing is not as efficient. Now, I should say that this is accumulation rate, because this is the rate of processing, then the lower you are, the less efficient you are. And you can see that this condition, out of all of the four, this bar is the lowest one. That is the bar indicating all the results with the structure. It's the lowest of all conditions. It marks the detriment performance, the impairment performance due to the structures. Also, so I think it's probably about time to wrap things up. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, hold on for just a second. Let me see if there's anything else. Oh, that's just another way to look at capacity using rates. Here we simply uh, take a difference or a ratio of scores between the rate of single and double targets. The same way we calculate the capacity coefficient, we can take a ratio between double and single rates of the energy model. And we find again a bigger detriment, so a larger effect for the point. So really, I think we can probably finish here and then answer questions if you have any. The idea is that the NBA is a very convenient model to use to describe your decision. We can also use it as a sophisticated measurement whereby the rate of evidence accumulation is indicative or a marking the efficiency of positive under various conditions. And the uh, measure that I'm mostly interested in is that of capacity. We've learned that capacity is quite important. And this framework allows us to use the LBA in order to evaluate capacity in terms of model or probability. We can do other things, but I don't think we need to do them right now. So these are two papers that you can refer to if and when you like to read a little bit about the use of MBA to measure capacity and how it was used to uh, test uh, theories of quantum energy using capacity. Thank you very much again. We had a terrific time. I thank you for your attention and really everything.